6.02 on Wednesday evening, October 6. May I have a roll call, please? What, oh, Pledge of Allegiance. I'm sorry. I'm going to get my brain off to speed here. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Yeah, it's Frank's fault. I, I'm, I'm off key right now. <laughs> no, I'm Bill okay. Is charged, you Carol, know. may I have a roll call, please, at this yes, time? Yes, Chairman. Vice Chair Judy Bory. Here. Commissioner D.L. Kine. Here. Commissioner Luciano Buzin. Uh, Luciano's not here. Absent. I thought by now. Commissioner Frank Shanebeck. Here. Well done. Commissioner Heather Muller. Here. Commissioner Walker Waldy, excused. Okay. Chairman Wayne Standage. Here. Thank you. We have five members, so we have a quorum. Okay. Um, the commission on the consent agenda, the commission may at this time take single action on any or all items listed as consent agenda items. Any member of the commission may remove any item from the consent agenda for discussion and cause a separate vote on the matter later in the agenda. Agenda. Do I have a motion to accept this? Mr. Chairman, I move that we accept the consent agenda as written. Do I, ha uh, do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, Frank and then Judy. Okay, Carol, may I have a roll call vote now, please? Yes, sir. Commissioner Walker Waldy is excused. Vice Chair Judy Bory? Yes. Commissioner D. Alkine? Yes. Commissioner Luciano Buzin? Absent. Commissioner Frank Shanebeck? Yes. Commissioner Heather Muller? Yes. Chairman Wien Standage? Yes. Thank you. It's unanimous. Okay, Liz, question for you. This consent agenda, that covers the two items, 506 and 536? Correct. Okay. Do any commission members, we are around five right now, information and reports. Do any commission members have something they have attended that they would like to share with us? Well, I just had a good five week road trip. <laughs> <laughs> Visiting three daughters in the great Northwest and uh, found a little state park. Speaking of parks in Nevada, Valley of the Fire State Park and it's uh, sandstone formations incredibly carved up. Complete, just got lucky looking for a place to spend the night and stayed there for three nights. So that's why I was here, wasn't here last meeting. Well, <coughs> he was, oh yeah, that's right. He missed last I missed meeting last here, meeting. but he also missed his MPC meeting too, <laughs> last week. Oh, but I did that by phone. That was by phone. <coughs> I did that by phone. Sorry to get off track there. Okay. Uh, we didn't go that far off. Yes, ma'am. And uh, I haven't attended it yet, but Make a Difference Day is on the 9th. So we'll be doing all kinds of different projects. So looking forward to that. Liz, I do have one comment. Every time I have to come up into this area of town, I always make my my trip so I go past the dog park and I enjoy seeing the activity that's taken place to now <coughs> and okay that does it for that six is staff report and I'll turn this over to you Liz at this time both items 
Thank you, Chairman Standage. Um, I will start off with the parks um, section, parks and other service areas, and I'll kick off right segue um, out of Judy's comment on Make a Difference Day. We are really excited that the Community Development Corporation selected three of our areas in the parks to um, have volunteers come out and work for Make a Difference Day. So this Saturday at 8 a.m. sharp, all of the volunteers that have signed up for Make a Difference Day will be meeting at the focal point like they had many years ago. They're going to do a um, big picture with everybody and hand out their shirts and make sure people are registered and then they're sending them off to their sites. Anybody who does not want to be a part of a big group still or a big gathering can certainly go directly to the site um, or keep their distance. They, they have opportunities for that. But the three locations that they are going to be working at are Silly Mountain Park. They'll be working in the Botanical Walk again. And this year they're doing a lot of erosion control and trail the Botanical Walk's little path, um, raking that in and fixing some of the erosion areas. And then there will be some, a little bit of planting and weeding and things like that as well at Silly Mountain. Uh, Flatiron, they are going to be working with our Youth Advisory Council and they'll be doing some rock painting at the, uh, at the Ramada and then they're doing a little bit of cleanup on that little Think Desert Trail there. And then the final project that they selected that's with Parks and Rec is um, there's a handful of them that are going to be painting the, um, the uh, etched portion of the bricks at the focal point. So when people donated for bricks, some of those, the black that used to be in there is kind of fading away. And so I think Gail, uh, Council Member Gail Evans, former Council Member, um, and our former Vice Mayor Robin Barker, they're going to be there doing that with another small handful of volunteers. So that's what's happening for Make a Difference Day. Those are just three city projects. They are also going to be doing a ton of neighborhood projects and cleaning up anybody who had reached out in advance and needed some help with their yards. Um, they have groups going out to those sites as well. So it should be a great day. That's Make a Difference Day. Anybody have any questions on that item? So did you say that people can show up that day and then they'll just be assigned or they have they to? They can. They will have registration forms on site. So if you still want to sign up, you're welcome to. Um, and then I would just say if you wanted to go directly to a site, no volunteer will be turned away. So I would just recommend maybe going at about 8.30 once they've made it back to all the sites. If you really don't want to be in a crowd or you don't want to be with the whole group, um, you can certainly do that. Um, the other couple of quick updates on parks, we'll talk about dog park down in a future agenda item, so I'm, I'm going to save that for later. Um, but just wanted to give you another update on uh, BLM. So we did have the appraiser did come out to inspect the rodeo grounds. So just as you recall, we are working on a very lengthy process to potentially purchase the rodeo um, arena and the, the rodeo grounds in the fenced area. And the appraiser from the Department of the Interior did come out and met with us and walked the whole property. Um, so that's another major step in the process that hopefully soon in the next months or so we'll be getting back some actual dollar numbers. And then that way, once we know what that is, that will be shared with the council for them to start deciding whether or not they have the funds. We have no idea at all what amount of money it's going to be. So I just want to prepare everybody for that. Um, it is only for the land itself. So no amenities or anything like that is added into the appraisal because we um, put those, we installed all of those ourselves. So that's the update on BLM. Um, we have the two grants that I've shared with you many times and I just want to share with you that we still have not been given our final funding okay from, so once it hit the state parks level in July, it got sent on to national parks and that's where it'll get its final funding for both the Land Water Conservation Fund grant which is um, funding all the, amenity, all the improvements at Superstition Shadows Park, and the Recreation Trails Program grant, which is funding Silly Mountain's restroom and um, Ramada and fence repairs. They have let us know that they anticipate being able to release funding in December and that we could start um, quoting or getting our projects finalized. So then we have 
depending on the project, we have anywhere from two years to three years to complete the project. And so we will do it as we did budget for this year's um, round of projects that we can complete. So we will start those as soon as we are given the final okay. So we'll, we'll keep keeping you updated. Um, wanted to mention the focal point. So uh, we were very disappointed in one of our rows of flowers, uh, either it got uh, infested or we're not sure what kind of, what has happened to that row, but they look really scraggly. The rest of the flowers have done really well in that whole area. So um, it is getting to be time though for the winter flowers to be planted. So these ones will come out of the ground and um, we'll be planting something like petunias or something that's really vibrant. They will be testing the soil and just kind of looking to see what issues are there. There wasn't issues with water or anything else like that, so we're not really sure what happened to that batch of flowers. But just want to kind of keep you in the loop on that as you might observe that. When about do you think they're going to do the replacement? Um, those will be happening sometime in the next month or so. Next week, they will be removing that one row and just working on some soil replacement and looking to see, you know, maybe if there's something that they can figure out was wrong there. Um, but then in sometime at the end of October or so, they'll be replacing the other flowers. Just in case it comes up somewhere. Yeah. And that um, concludes my just report on parks. I have a question. Uh, your BLM is out here to check on the rodeo grounds. Uh, what is the status for Prospector Park area? So I know they're two separate yep, entities. Yeah, two separate leases, but Prospector Park will continue to be on the recreation and public purpose lease. We yeah. okay. do not feel that there was a need. I think at some point the council determined that because the process is so lengthy and it is costly to even pursue the process. So we budgeted $80,000 just to find out how much it's going to cost and to get the appraisal and all of the pieces that have to go into place in order to buy it. So um, those are all the costs, the estimated costs. It could be less than that. Um, but we didn't feel that there was a need at Prospector Park to do that. All of our uses at Prospector Park, for the most part, are um, within the rec and public purpose lease. Um, so that one, nothing else is happening to that. Once we make a final decision on the purchase of the rodeo grounds, we will move to pat patenting. <laughs> I just said that wrong again. Patenting. I can't say it out loud. Um, the Prospector Park. So a lease is, we, BLM still owns it. We are leasing it for no money. We have to abide by the rec and public purpose um, needs. A patent means that we actually hold the title and it's more in perpetuity. We don't have to renew it ever as long as we continue, though, to do recreation and public purpose. So still, we can't do commercial activities. The only way to do commercial activities at this point is to purchase it. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. I was just wondering. No, yeah, well, that's that. a great question. Anybody else have questions? And, and that'll include concerts, that type of thing. Once it's At the rodeo ground, so if a concert is um, part of one of our existing free programs or things with our city, um, or you know, part of if there's a band playing at Lost Dutchman Days, those are allowed. But a concert that people are charged to go to um, that an outside promoter might do or a commercial entity, until we own the rodeo grounds, we wouldn't be able to do something like that. Okay. And then um, the next part of my director's report, or the staff report, is uh, e upcoming events and activities, as well as just a report on recreation. And so I'm going to turn it over to Jamie Sullivan at this time. Okay. Is that one on? I think so. Okay. Yep, we're on. I wish he could lower the, or increase the bass, so my voice would sound a little bit like this. <laughs> Doesn't even help, does it? No, it sounds the same. Okay. All right. So I'm going to recap a little bit. In September, we brought back our mad science event. We were on hiatus, just like a lot of our programs were, but we brought it back in person. Huge success. We had over 200 scientists come and attend the event. The entire facility almost is full of um, science experiments. 
We hope that it helps the kids get them going for, you know, science fair, gets the parents excited about science fair. Uh, so we were really excited to see a lot of our kids and a lot of our families come back. I got to be the door greeter and I met a lot of new families who had never even been in our facility before. So they must not live here because I like to think that everybody who lives here has already been there at least once. So um, really great way to show off our programs. The highlight and the conclusion of Mad Science is the exploding of watermelons and we compete with two other entities. We compete with our police department and the fire department. Unfortunately, we are no longer the reigning champions. <laughs> and I have a little video to show. facilities and to see all of our patrons coming back so uh, like I mentioned we had over 200 in attendance that's a pretty average year for us so we felt good like events are coming back and people are wanting to be back at them we are in the process of our fall camp so AJUSD is in intercession and we try to provide some programming during that time we offer a morning camp and an afternoon camp Every session filled at a max of 25 kids per camp, so that is exciting. Our co-ed softball league finished up, and the champions of our lower bracket were the American Misfits. And the champions of our upper bracket, not related at all to the lower bracket, was also the Misfits, so <laughs> completely unrelated. T-ball for the little kids uh, con has concluded, and then flag football will start up in the beginning of November. So while our fields are being reseeded, we don't have uh, a use for it happening until November. Pickleball, league, pickleball leagues are starting this month. Um, we're almost full, so towards the end of the month we'll be out, I don't remember which evening, but we actually have a league that they can play in and then we have a, a tournament also in November. And then we've also are bringing back our rock paint parties, our family nights. They used to be pretty popular. We'd get 80 to 100 people come out for those. A little bit different as we're asking for pre-registration so we can keep people a little bit more separated, but we're excited to have our first one the end of this month. So your guys' homework is at the next commission meeting when they ask to report back on any of the events or programs that you attended, hopefully you will have something that you went to that was Parks and Rec related because we have something almost every single weekend happening. Um, so they already mentioned the Community Make a Difference Day, so that's coming up this weekend. The next weekend is Pretty in Pink. You guys have a flyer for that. Thank you ladies for representing. I much appreciate you coming to support <laughs> Pretty in Pink event. It'll be October 16th. They're gonna be dancing for an hour and a half, but if you only have five minutes, that's fine too. If you don't want to dance, just bring some money. Then you don't have to dance. You can <laughs> donate it. Um, so they are trying to raise some money for breast cancer awareness. They have a ton of gift baskets um, that were donated that you can win by buying raffle tickets. Then, if you are busy that weekend, the next weekend is the mud run. So you can come get dirty. Um, you can walk it. You can run it. You can jog it or you can just register and give us your $10 and then come out and you know cheer everybody on at the finish line. Uh, we'll be happy to have you that way too. This event, we usually average anywhere from two to 300 people. We're already at almost 200 registered. So we're also very excited about that number. If you are still busy all week, all month and haven't been able to get to one of our events, then you can come to the Halloween festival. So that will be held on the Saturday, the 30th, prior to Halloween. So we will have trunks, we will have booths. If you want to volunteer, you can let me know. If you know of any vendors or any agencies who would like to participate, send them to the webpage because it has all the information. 
We are already getting a lot of uh, candy donations. We had a lot of great people step up. Fry's gave us a discount. Les Dutchman Realty has donated candy. Desert Schools Federal, Desert Federal Credit Union, they have a new name now. Yeah. Uh, first time donors, but they donated candy. The Elks Lodge first time donors have donated candy. Also throughout town, we have candy monsters. Our staff built these incredible looking monsters so you can go feed the monster a bag of candy. Um, so there's one at the Handlebar, there's one at the Elks Lodge, there's one at the Library, Multi-Gen Center. So again, make your rounds around town. Give us some candy. Okay, now your la then you can go to a concert. So November 6th, we have a concert in the park. And then your last flyer uh, towards the into fall, we start our park to park challenge. Uh, it was our first year last year, we kicked it off. It was very popular. So every single month we'll offer a different activity for you to go to. You can earn yourself a t-shirt by doing them all. Uh, the first one will be uh, the trails behind the multi-gen center. We kind of make sure that it's well guided. We set up water and snacks at the end. Uh, so it's a great way to, and hopefully it won't be 90 degrees by then. So those are all, like I said, literally every single weekend there's something going on. Hopefully something you want to participate in. And then lastly, just want to let you guys know that the public hearing uh, for our fee increase that we brought to you guys, we went through that process, then we took it to council. It will go to public hearing on November 16th. So hopefully we'll be able to seal the deal on that and then I can sleep better at night. But <laughs> just as a reminder that that is, we um, are increasing some of our facility reservations. Um, we are adding in a non-resident fee to our facility rentals only. And also the big thing is, is finally being able to allow businesses to be able to utilize some of our facilities to be able to either have events or conduct business. So, and that is the report on recreation, unless you guys have questions. Any questions, ladies? I have one question. For the Halloween event, how would you like us to let you know that we want to volunteer? So you can either let me know right now, and I will send you an email with the details. You can also go through the web page, um, and there, like, there will be a contact okay. Jeff Cop or but so, but I'll just send you an email, and then you can tell me how you want to volunteer. Sounds good. Thank you. <coughs> Question for you: You mentioned the public input is the end result, right, Liz? Jamie? The public hearing on the public fee. hearing. Mm -hmm. That's the word. Okay, where is that going to be held at? It's here. It's at oh, the it'll be council right here meeting. in the council mm -hmm. chambers. Yep. So, just as a reminder, um, at our last presentation, that the next step to change any fees that might affect businesses, the state law requires us to have a 60-day notice okay. before a public hearing of the council. So, the council I reported back had heard it last um, at a work session and they were good with us moving forward and posting the public hearing and that is set for November 16th and it's a public hearing at a city council meeting. Can I add one more thing too? So just Jamie um, shared a ton of really great programs that we're doing and I just wanna kind of, as we do, we're not totally out of COVID. Uh, we think it's important for everybody to understand that every event, every activity is going through different protocols. So. For example, the Mad Science Night, we usually we pack everything into the gym and it's really more like a science fair atmosphere, but this year we spread things out so that way people who would like to keep their distance certainly could, we provided masks. There's hand um, sanitation at every single uh, one of the spots. But all of the communities all around are ready to come back and many people have vaccinated they have done all the things that they you know feel that they need to do to help keep our community safe and so the recreation department has done a great job of finding ways to make sure that everybody can still be safe as safe as possible if they're ready to come out and understanding that some people it's still not the time for them so we're still going to have we have a lot of really great opportunities in the parks our park to park challenge is a really great one if any of you would like, don't want to go to a big event or an activity, you can also just attend one of the parks and check out what's happening at one of those as part of Jamie's homework mm -hmm. and challenge. Yep. <laughs> and then Judy, I know you had a question about Pretty in Pink earlier. Did you get it answered? Yes. There's no fee, it's 
Yep, it's free to the public, so you can come dance for free. If anything, again, if you want to just come by the center, if you like the color pink, they've done an amazing job. You should check that um, out. Yeah, come, come just kind of walk through. It's really interesting this time of year because Pretty in Pink is always the same. It's always the middle of October, but we're always also getting ready for Halloween. So it's like this mashup of Pretty in Pink and Halloween decorations. So it's, it's kind of cool. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Jamie. Okay. Thank you, Jamie. I got to echo that. You've done a good presentation for us. Some great events. Some really great events. Okay. We're on to item seven, which is old business. Uh, Director Langenbach, uh, you're going to talk about the item I mentioned first. <laughs> But go to it, kiddo. Perfect. So I don't have a whole lot to update you on, but I did want to just share some. So these are some of our contractors sends weekly pictures of what they're working on and some of those. So I'm just going to quickly breeze through these. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but you'll see a bunch of them. These were early on after that first rain. Um, that's my favorite, actually, the one of the <laughs> dumpster in the middle of the rain. They did manage to get all that out. They had to pump all that water out. Um, and then some of these, and these kind of go get out of order a little bit here, but this is digging that channel that our low, low uh, flow swale that's going to wrap around the dog park is getting dug out. Um, well, they've got the concrete for the base of it. Yeah. I noticed. These are just some more flood pictures. And then here they're um, getting all the forms set up yeah. for the concrete to come in, and then you can kind of see a little bit of the concrete here. They have done a lot of different things, working overnight, doing some different things at different times just to kind of stay on schedule. Um, we did have several delays throughout the project early on. So the first two weeks that we were delayed was because of rain. I think we've already shared that with everybody here. Then we were delayed for another two weeks-ish on um, water line uh, issues that are not that were unforeseen, so things that were really not part of our plan. This is a major water line um, that is like the, ma the main line for Arizona water, and the erosion um, basically just took all the dirt out from around it, and we discovered that it was not, even at the time it was put in, it wasn't meeting the standards that it needed to. And so oh, and unfortunately, <laughs> that meant that we, now that we know about it, and once we talked with Arizona Water, we had to find a way to mitigate it. And so luckily, something that could have taken about four months, our wonderful Arizona Water Company, they worked with us to try to find other creative solutions that were safe and per standard. And they've kind of, they've rectified that issue. We also had another water line. So when the, um, Fire department was built. They built that building that's on the county complex. Mm -hmm. Their plans are separate from the county plans, and so the county plans that we utilized for our design did not show that line anywhere. Um, and so that was actually discovered while we were doing our channel dig, and so that took a couple weeks just to try to figure out what was going to be our best solution for that. So our contractor, Shoals, They've been fabulous um, at being real flexible and moving guys off our project to other projects and keeping us going. We just learned this week that they feel that they're still right on, they're pretty well on track. So um, they're really only about, a, they were able to move some things around and they're only about a week behind, but they're still well within the contract deadline, which is the end of January. So they're still looking at a beginning of January completing um, just want to remind everybody that doesn't mean that's when we're going to open. We're going to open based on a lot of different things, you know, being in place and our ribbon cutting and planning our grand opening and all those kinds of things. So as we get closer to that, uh, that'll be a little bit more apparent. So uh, just a, yes. Was, was that clay pipes or was that lead pipes or what? That's a concrete pipe, I believe. I don't know what it was made out of. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's not the pipe itself that was a problem. It was how close it was to the cement and to the grade that we had to do some mitigation for. So, now, so the pipe itself wasn't a problem. We didn't hurt. There was no water um, damaged or anything like that. It was just more of making sure that it was per standard once we poured our apron in that's going to be going for the drainage. Okay, that, that amp apron is going to go over the top, I figure, of that water pipe. Yes, so right now... Currently, the, there was already a little cement apron here, and then there was yeah. riprap. So we are just going to be, uh, the, 
that big storm washed out all the dirt, and so it exposed everything. And so we'll be putting our own, and there is some different types of, um, a, the spillway here is going to be a little bit different, but um, we're still going to be able to be per plan. So that's where we're at in the dog park. We're moving right along. Jamie um, continues to, um, she'll be running the citizen focus group. So we've met another time. We've been meeting with the park rangers on rules and regulations. At this time for rules and regulations, um, we'll certainly be talking with Joel a little bit more, but as of now, we feel like there are the city ordinances, which is what you guys approve and what the council approves, are sufficient. So very similar to when we put in the MGC or the skate park, there are no ordinances that talk about skate park rules. It basically, the ordinance says that all park rules determined by the department will be adhered to and that the park ranger can do those. Ordinances are much more things like are no smoking or um, that dogs have to be on a leash if they're not in a designated area kind of thing. So we're still identifying those. We'll be talking with Joel a little bit about it. If there is anything, uh, and we've looked at all the other cities and what they've done. Um, so if there is a rule or two, or I'm sorry, an ordinance or a law that needs to change, that will be coming to you guys, and then it will be going to the city council at one of the next meetings. Um, but as of right now, we think we're still really doing really well. Once we finalize some of those, we will share with you guys what are the rules and some of the understanding of the rules um, that are going to be at the dog park. Additionally, the citizen committee is um, helping to look at corporate partnerships, and um, other donations. They are looking at um, expanding a volunteer base, talking about what programming is gonna be happening there. Jamie has recently met with the Paws and Claws staff, Lori and Jenny, and they're super excited about vaccination events and other things that they can hold at the park. So we're really excited to be able to partner and have a, a great place for them to be at as well. Um, and so some more of those details will be coming to you guys as we finalize that, but just wanted to kind of mention that that's the other piece that's going on right now with the dog park. And um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them at this time. Well, you, you've answered mine, Frank. I'm good. Judy? Yeah. Heather? Gail? Okay. Hey, you're clear, kid. Great. <laughs> Okay, we've finished old business. Our next item is new business regarding the new master plan for the Parks and Rec Department. Liz, I turn this over to you now. Great. So um, I'm just gonna kick right into here. Just a little history. So in your packet, so you do have um, the slideshow just so that way if you need to keep notes or you wanna keep information, you can. But also in your packet and what you received last week, was the um, section of the general, the current general plan that covers parks and recreation, and so we'll talk about that here in a, in a little bit. But just a quick history on how parks and rec master plan has worked over the years. Um, 1999, we adopted our first parks and recreation master plan, so uh, Jeff Bell and the commission uh, made those recommendations, and then that went to council for adoption, and then it was later amend amended in 2007 in your guys's black binders i think that old stuff is still in there just so that you can see but in 2010 when the city decided to um whenever they did their general plan update they decided to roll parks and recreation right into the general plan so that it would be approved by voters and considered by voters um, that meant that our master plan where we did a little bit more specific planning no longer existed and then all we really had was the general plan. It was certainly very um, comprehensive. Uh, the public got to weigh in a little bit on that. Um, and it was termed parks, recreation, and open space element. It was chapter nine. Then this most recent general plan update that was done um, in-house with the city, that one was approved by voters on August 4th. And that one is the 2020 general plan, but it, this one is spanning what, is it, what are we looking at for the next 30 years um, of, of the city. It will have to be readopted in another 10 years, just so you know. The 30 years is, um, I don't want it to be deceiving. It's not for 30 years. They'll still have to readopt and re-update every 10 years. 
In this one, our section, Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Element moved to Chapter 2. We moved up in the world, and it's very excited about that. But that's where we are. That's where it is in the voter-approved um, planning document. And just like general plan states, it's very general. So um, it doesn't have some of the details that we used to have prior. In goal 2.1 of the 2020 general plan, had one policy item that we placed in there that said that we were gonna update and reintroduce the Parks and Rec master plan for review and eventual approval by the Parks and Rec Commission and the City Council. So this isn't something that has to go to voters, but we will definitely be involving citizens. We are not gonna just rely on them to see our meetings and wanna come at six o'clock. We'll have a whole bunch of outreach happening um, during the process of all of this. But just wanted to let you know where this is coming from. We did determine that we wanted to identify that a more specific plan was needed that would maybe show some of our um, short, midterm, and long-term goals. Um, chapter two, so the chapter that we're in in the general plan, um, it identifies four major sections in there. It talks a little bit about parks and recreation funding and how we get funded for all of our services. It talks a little bit about the national benchmarks. Um, and then it talks pretty extensively about the classification of parks and lists all the existing facilities that we have. The last section of chapter two is our departmental goals and policies. And this one covers parks as well as programs, as well as marketing and some of our other services. So um, let me just point you if you're looking at this document that is the our section chapter two um, in the early parts of it it will talk a little bit about classification and we're not going to go over all that tonight i just want to point it out to you that that's an important element that is not going to change that was determined and voted on um, and then like i said it lists out all of our parks that fall into each of those categories then it goes into, in the very last few pages, it lists all the goals and the policies that um, would be things that we're going to be working on as a department over the next 10 years. What it's lacking is, in our old document, we had kind of a plan that was a short term, what's going to happen in the next one to three years, what's going to happen in the next three to five years, and then... Seven, I, don't, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it was more of a short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. Um, so that's what's in our existing portion of the general plan. Right here, I have just summarized. So there are five major goals, and each of the goals in Chapter 2 um, has individual policies that kind of support those goals. So just going to kind of cover this really quickly. Um, one goal is that we're gonna develop a system of parks, trails, and open space. That's pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna make sure that we are looking at the um, places that we have, answering the needs that our community puts towards us and planning for growth. One of the policy items was looking at where will we put a dog park? We're already gonna be able to check off one of the major things in that item, which is exciting. So there's a bunch of different policies within that that I would definitely encourage you to look at. We'll be delving a little more deeply into that later. Um, the second goal is to plan for the safety, maintenance, and expansion of existing facilities. So, so the first goal is about future growth and expand and having new things. The second goal, though, is we wanted to make sure that it's known that our existing facilities that are very old and do have some improvement needs, they need to be addressed as well. And so that's something that we're going to want to address through this new uh, master plan. Number, the third goal is lead, us taking a leadership role in, in um, having diverse programming and services. So um, the things in Jamie's area that we already provide, not only the things that we provide, but the partnered programs or the partnerships we have with other entities so that way there's multiple um, avenues of recreation throughout the community. So for example, our partnerships with Boys and Girls Club, with Imagine Prep and the Apache Junction High School, some of those different entities that we might not be running the program, but we're either marketing their program or we're supporting their program in a different way. Goal number four um, 
is that we're gonna promote the parks, trails, open space programs and services. So that has a little more, bit more to do about our marketing goals and what we're gonna be doing to make sure that that happens. And then the fifth and final goal in chapter two is um, that we're utilizing multiple funding sources. So really looking at how we are doing this, not just relying on general fund. So you guys have already established, done one of the policies in that, which was for us to relook at our uh, fees and to do a market study again here in this next 10 years. Again, another one that we're gonna be checking off the list. Um, one of the future kind of visions of these next things that we're gonna be doing with this master plan is taking each one of those policies that's under the goals and creating a spreadsheet so that way we're sharing that with you guys on a regular basis and as well as with our staff and checking off the items um, as we get them done and then looking to see if we have to adjust any of those goals the next time around. So that's all the stuff that's there now. Your guys' task and staff's task over the next year, it might take a year and a half. I'm not sure of what the exact, we haven't set a timeline at this point. Um, but what we want to be doing to relook at a true parks and rec master plan, so it's the de so the general plan is the general idea, the summary, but our parks and rec master plan is getting into the details, getting into the not just what are we going to do, but the how, when, and where we're going to do it. Um, so I've listed kind of six major outcomes of the parks and rec master plan that we're going to be doing, and this should be on your screen. If you can't read it, you can certainly look at the big screen. Um, we want to identify and prioritize expansion of parks. So, um, and then we are going to do that based on national standards and our community's input. So what is it that we still want to have in our community? Uh, when the dog park got listed on Facebook, one of the first immediate things were, well, why don't we have a better splash pad? You know, we, all we have is the little dinky um, water, a few fountains at Flatiron. Well, it was never intended to be a major splash pad. It, we have an aquatic center. Dog park was next on our list. But we sure are hearing a lot that splash pads are really needed and wanted. And that might end up being one of the things that we prioritize for a next, a future project. The BLM purchase, is that a major priority? Those are things that we're going to be asking. So one of the major outcomes of the Parks and Rec Master Plan is that with your help, the community's help, and staff's help, we're going to identify and prioritize how we're going to expand. The second major um, outcome is that we want to inventory existing programs and services and identify future needs. So the same thing for parks that we're talking about, we want to do for programs. What, where are the gaps? You know, we have a little less cultural um, events and cultural activities. We have a little less outdoor recreation um, opportunities. Our staff does an amazing job of sprinkling those in here and there. Um, but where are things, and do people want them? They might, we don't get a lot of requests for certain things. It might not be a need, but that's what we'll be discovering here in this next year. The, oops, shoot. The third item is that we want to do that assessment of existing facilities and identify the areas for improvement or expansion. So we've already done that to some degree at a staff level, um, but it's on a major spreadsheet that is seriously like, millions and millions and millions of dollars that we do not currently have a funding source for. So looking at those facilities, doing some additional assessment, and then prioritizing what are the facility, what are the biggest safety needs that need to be addressed. We've been doing that at a staff level, but we want to take it to this level and have some help and some community input on what's needed the most. The fourth item is that we want to assess the effort effectiveness of all of our marketing tools. So we have policies in the general plan about making sure we have these, um, but as a department, the recreation division who runs most of this is all the time looking to see what works and doesn't work. I pulled um, some images from a PowerPoint that the recreation division had on, the, uh, on our SharePoint or someplace, and I think it was a staff tool but one of the items said, and it listed our three marketing places. So Jamie, I don't know if you know where I'm going with this, but Twitter basically had a comment of, we're really just doing this because our boss said to do it. I don't know if they meant boss lady Jamie or me. <laughs> because it's not real, Twitter is not really utilized heavily by parks and recreation departments. Some cities do, 
Certainly political entities do, sports entities do. We don't get a lot of traction on it. We just kind of felt like we needed to be doing it. But do we? Do we need to waste time on it if nobody's using it? Probably not. I hate looking at things that don't have any likes. I only want to see things that have likes or comments. So having that assessment, and that'll be part of this whole needs assessment that we're doing with the community as well as with you guys. The fifth item is not so much about this dive in movie, but it's about inventorying all of our funding sources and developing strategies for ma maximizing these. So again, I think at the staff level, we are picking and choosing the things that we can definitely do, and we've done a great job of stretching all the dollars that we have, but this will be a great opportunity for us to really talk about what grants, what corporate partnerships, what donations, how our fees contribute to our funding, and then how general fund and some of the other sources we're getting it. This image is really just to emphasize that we put out a grant through SRP and received it. It's the reason we were able to do all the movies that we've done. Uh, without SRP support, we would not be having these activities at all. We'd be finding another way of doing them. Or we'd be doing them three times a year, which is kind of how it was long ago. They're, they're super popular. And then the final outcome that we hope to get from the Parks and Rec Master Plan is community involvement. So as you can see today, there's nobody here. It doesn't mean that some people don't watch the video. That's possible. Um, but people don't tend to come to these kinds of meetings. It might be because of the time. It might be because of their interest or that they think things are going smoothly and they don't need to bring anything up. But I think what we're missing is hearing what people really want. And so really it's the loudest people that Jamie and I listen to. So the people that are demanding pickleball. Do we really know whether those are the most, the biggest need in the community? It's the loudest, and it does look like a big need because we have a lot of people doing it. For a while, dog park was the loudest thing that we were asking is why don't we have this? So we're gonna work really hard through this process over the next year to come up with multiple ways to engage the community. So some of that is surveys on social media, some of that is these meetings and being real proactive, inviting people to them. Um, others might be doing all of our, having a booth at our major events. That's how the general plan got the most, most of their engagement from the community, was asking people. Um, it might be open house, an open house that invites people to come. Um, but I really, we really would like for you guys to be thinking about, especially those of you that have been with our commission for a long time. Um, what, in your experience over the years, has been successful for the city or for the Parks and Rec Department? Those that are newer, why, were you, why would you or your friends or your family members not be engaged? And what could we do to kind of engage people that otherwise aren't right now? So I definitely would like for you guys to be thinking about that one. We'll be discussing that further. So that's the general presentation of, today was just kind of an overview of what we're hoping to accomplish over the next um, year or so, and then what that's gonna look like. And at this time, I'd love to just open it up to questions, and then we can kind of discuss this through a little bit more about what your role might be. Okay, Judy. Um, Flatiron Park, what phase are we in? So, Flatiron and yeah, so there's a, couple of there's a couple of phases left there. So one is adding that ramada that's going to be on the corner by Think Water. Um, so basically more adjacent to North Apache Trail, the, remote, the big ramada there, and then converting all the gravel, um, so making that walkway continuous. And so it will be uh, concrete so that we can fit more food trucks and more um, things like that. So that's phase two, and that is in our plan for our development fee money to go to that next after the dog park. Um, phase three of Flatiron is the observation deck and I hope nobody's listening and is gonna be mad at me for saying this, but I don't imagine us doing it. It's like a million dollars is what I heard after it already been presented. Maybe, maybe there'll be a great corporate partner that will <laughs> wanna do that someday, maybe in 10 years or something like that. Um, but right now we can do a lot, there's a lot of other things that we need to do with the, with a million dollars. So that's phase three. I don't see that being funded right this instant. Okay, Heather. Got some questions or anything? Comments? No, I just want to 
Yeah. Yep. Frank? Well, <laughs> the, just the mechanism of getting us involved, I guess, is what I'd have for a question, because there's identify and prioritize, inventory, assess. I mean, there's all, all kinds of action verbs there for us to get involved and do those things. Um, leadership and direction, I guess, is what I'd be looking for is, you know, you want me to sit down and inventory some existing programs, let me know. We'll, you know, have at it. But so I think that's what I'm looking for is a mechanism of how to get us involved. So I think staff will still be doing a lot of the heavy lifting as far as presenting what we have. So in some of that inventory, you'll be getting some of that. But anybody who wants to be involved in that, so I think it's more a question of how do you want to be involved. So staff will certainly be presenting what we have. We'll be doing a lot of research on the benchmark information from NRPA, so National Rec and Park Association has great standards. But we also have some very local, like it's a great thing to think of in other states of what they do, but what is happening locally. So staff will certainly be doing market research on our benchmarks. And so we'll be very staff heavy, and then we'll be presenting those pieces to you guys as well as to the public. So as we look at, so we might have an open house or we might have a whole series of time where people are responding to prioritizing something, that data is gonna come back to you guys. You guys will get to kind of review it, give your feedback, talk about how maybe we missed the mark. If we had an, a presentation and all this stuff at you know, I don't know, Lost Dutchman Days that's heavily visitor oriented, we would want your feedback of whether or not that's a true indication of what is needed in our community. So I think it's really more of a, um, we want you to be involved in bouncing off kind of where we're at and keeping us on track and being somebody who's gonna criticize and critique, um, you know, how the data's coming. But if somebody has an interest in being more involved, then just let me know and we will certainly get you involved more at the ground level of in the field or doing some different things. So great question. Yeah. Liz, I had one thought that came to my mind. You mentioned, for example, like uh, the dog park. You had a lot of people, why don't we have this? Has that kind of dropped a little now that we're in the process of actually completing that design? So yeah, we don't ever get it. So if anybody asks if we have a dog park, then we point them to the dog park page and they're super thrilled. So new people in the community might ask us, but for the most part, everybody knows it's coming. Um, they're really excited about it. We've had nothing but in every group that we've gone to, they're super jazzed and just think it's so great. Um, so yeah, the dog park has that question has gone away, but it's, you know, it's just like, so at Flatiron, we, we needed an event area, so we didn't have to close down Apache Trail. We had the, now we have this amazing event area, and we kept getting questions about, well, why are you doing that and not building the dog park? So now the dog park's being built, and now it's like, why aren't you building a splash pad, or where is there anything for kids? Luckily, we had residents that piped in and said, well, here are the places that are for kids. This is the next thing to be built. Um, so I'd say right now, the number one things that are being asked are pickleball, more pickleball, and um, splash pads are the two biggest things that we're getting requests for. I was just wondering, because you've been here since uh, way before me, <laughs> and you know, you've know you got the pool, there was a, what, a, a desire for a pool, so now we've got the pool, and then you did the skateboard park, and. Uh, just as you've added different things, does the comments about having that drop except for the only comments are, well, hey, I'm glad we got this. Well, I would just say there's always people who don't, who want more of something. So pickleball, do you think pickleball, now that we've added, you know, we have pickleball indoors, we have two facilities that have pickleball, there's never enough pickleball. So we'll keep <laughs> getting those questions. Um, you know, well, Having a nicer one, I guess, is what I would say. So we don't get people saying, why don't you have a pool? But it's like, why isn't the pool open longer? Well, here's why. The whole month of August, like 20 people showed up every day. And so, um, and I'm exaggerating. It wasn't well, 20, but it felt like that. It feels like that when they're out there. It's not utilized. There's a lot of things that people say we should have that they don't ever intend to use. We had a lot of people that don't have dogs that think that we should have a dog park, and that's fine. I think that's a great request, but we need 
things that people are actually going to use. We have programs that people request all the time that nobody's interested in actually attending. The person who requests it never, never is a free to go to it. So it's really, you know, it's not just about asking the question of what do you want, it's about digging out what is preventing you from participating? What is preventing you from going to it? Um, is it even right, the right size? When people heard it was, the dog park was going to be at the retention basin, we had a lot of negative comments, a lot of mm -hmm. neg negative activity, and still they started seeing that it is plenty big enough. But every person that called and had a negative comment, we met with them, we took them out to the site, they were part of our initial citizen group, and they are our biggest advocates after that. So, mm -hmm. so that's, I'm sorry, that's not a, that's like a long-winded answer to your question, but I would just say it never, we never stop hearing things about certain stuff. It just okay. changes. It just changes. And I was looking at maybe it just drops a little to where it's easier to. For sure. We don't have near the amount of requests for a dog park because we're, we're building one. So that's definitely a for sure item. Okay. Um, what, what about the senior center? Um, is it utilized in the evenings or is it? The multi-generational center that the senior services is in is definitely utilized in the evening. So we have meetings. Now again, it's dropped because of COVID. We, we have not got back to our pre-COVID numbers anywhere, um, maybe except for a few for events. Senior services though itself during the day, those numbers are growing rapidly. We're still able to keep distancing and keep it going the way we need to, but it is coming back um, great. But the multi-gen center is, it's not the senior center in the evening. The multi-gen center is parks and recreation and it's utilized by karate and maybe not, yeah, karate is still happening. Meetings that other people have, all of our arts and crafts classes, we have a ton of things in the evening. Again, we have some room for growth, but it's really more due to, we're not fully back from COVID right now. People aren't ready to come back, especially indoors. So our indoor stuff, is a little bit going to be more challenging. Is suffering a little mm -hmm. bit. Okay. Anything else? So you'll see that we'll, this will be part of every agenda item um, moving forward and where we're at on it um, as we go and kind of updates. And then there will be areas that we'll be asking for your input. So what do you think about our plan for reaching out to the community? And that'll be up there and we'll, we'll want you to be responding to it. So just kind of be prepared that we'll lead you through what are some of the things that we want you to be thinking about and giving us advice on. Okay, thank you, Liz. We'll co go on now to item number nine on the schedule, which is called to the public. And I don't see any public here today. So we'll, we'll go on past that. Number 10 is call for future agenda items. Now, Liz has already mentioned she's going to be letting us know more about input and, and that from the public, so that'll be one item. Uh, does anybody else have an idea of what they would like to see on it? Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Since we've had flat irons done, the dog park's about to be done, we need another challenge, so. <laughs> uh, I'd, like, uh, I'd like us to look into uh, if any cities have a miniature golf course. I, I ran this by Jeff Struble, ex-councilman, and he lit up like a firecracker. So I think there may be some interest in that. And just, uh, let's, I'd like to see that pursued a little bit. That is an interesting deal. I think my wife would like seeing that. <laughs> okay. And Chairman Sanders, could I also yes, suggest that maybe we do an update on the state land? Okay. Um, we're not gonna discuss it, but for purposes of the agenda, uh, the annexation and everything passed last night at City Council, and um, we definitely wanna share with you at the next meeting how that impacts parks, as well as staffing and things like that, because it's gonna move pretty quickly, so state land. I, okay. see, you know, I see a challenge there for parks and rec to incorporate South Apache Junction into regular Apache Junction. Now with that, Liz, uh, 
how are, do you know how they're going to do like riparian zones? Uh, well, we can add that zones? to the agenda. I, we can add that to our discussion today. We're no. just put this no, item I is know. just I'm to just that item for with that state land issue. Sure. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Heather. Do we have her? Okay. That's Liz. Do you have any other item you can think of? Okay, so we're looking at mini golf course and update on state land. And the master plan. And mm -hmm. we don't need a motion to put those on for the future agenda. Okay, we're down to item 11, which is selection of meeting dates, times, location, and purpose. Uh, our regular meeting will be held at 6 p.m. November 3rd in the city council chambers located at 300 East Superstition Boulevard. Do I have a motion to select future meeting dates? I so move. Do I have a second? I second. I have a second. Carol, may I have a roll call? Thank you. Commissioner Heather Moeller? Yes. Commissioner Walker Waldy, excused. Vice Chair Judy Borey? Yes. Commissioner D.L. Kine? Yes. Commissioner Luciano Buzan? Absent. Commissioner Frank Shanebeck? Yes. Chairman Wayne Standage? Yes. Thank you. It's unanimous. Okay. With that, we now go to the adjournment, which is at 7.04. I adjourn this meeting. You, you guys are released. Released. <laughs> Release me. That, that's a dog park. That's joke, a dog right? park, son. <laughs>